then this is uh, managing and coping with stress and in this video we're looking at biofeedback um, and the basic idea of this is you, you reduce your stress by gaining control of those processes which normally are automatic like your heart rate um, and the way that you do that is because a machine gives you feedback about it and you learn through the feedback to control that automatic process. So let's have a look in a bit more detail at how this works. Uh, there are three phases in biofeedback. There's awareness and physiological feedback in the first phase. Then you move on to the relaxation training and gaining control. And then lastly, transfer where you transfer what you've learned to the real world. So firstly, awareness and physiological feedback. What happens in this stage is you get connected to some sort of machine which gives feedback to you about a physiological process that is connected to stress. Um, and also during this stage, the therapist explains what is being shown to you on a machine. So let's have a look at some examples. Um, there's various different things in this picture. One example here that you've got is the um, skin conduction, conductance response Sorry, is being measured. We've already studied that. As you know, it measures the amount that we're sweating and therefore how much our skin is conducting. Um, there's some other examples here that I've listed. You've got, you can wear a chest band to measure your breathing rate. Um, your heart rate can be measured via sensors on your fingers. And then all of these, you would see, if you look at this picture at the top here, you'll see feedback from whichever one of these that you're wearing. You'll be able to see feedback in some sort of graph or visual on the screen of a computer. And it's that that your therapist needs to explain to you what exactly it is that you're seeing um, so that you can uh, make sense of how it's all working. OK, so let's look at how the next stage. So what might happen in the next phase is you would use use the feedback to take control of your responses. For example, so one thing that's been trialled is by using games where you're, um, every time you manage to uh, bring your response down to a certain level, it gives you an advantage in the game, for example. Um, uh, equally, sometimes you need to be trained to do that, like where you're tensing and relaxing certain muscle groups, learning deep breathing techniques, visualisation where you're visualising um, being in a, you know, you've all heard the, the cliche of re imagining being on the beach and so on, but um, where you're visualising something like that, which is helping you to, to relax. So it might involve uh, being trained in a certain technique in order to make it work. And then it uses positive reinforcement um, of some sort to make progress. Um, for some people that might just sit, be seeing that they're making progress, but for others it might be linked to a game of some sort um, or praise from their uh, therapist or so on so what happens then in that once you've got control of the technique what you have to do is move it from therapy to the real world so sometimes that means you get a portable machine to take with you sometimes it doesn't but basically you have to go back from your uh, relaxing therapist's office where you've learned the techniques and it's safe and so on you have to then move into the real world environment where you normally are and try and apply those techniques that control that you've learned to your stress in everyday situations OK, let's look at some strengths and weaknesses then for our evaluation. What does research say? Is this an effective t technique? Um, the, the, can, the big key study about this was carried about, out by Le Maire, who um, took doctors um, and basically compared some, some doctors um, who were using biofeedback to some other doctors who were not using biofeedback and they compared how much their stress scores fell and the doctor stress scores fell significantly over that time um, and also continued to stay lower than the group who had um, been in, a, in the control group. Equally, we've got another study uh, by uh, Bouchard who um, gave biofeedback 
several via feedback sessions to soldiers um, and also a control group of soldiers and then measured their stress responses on a stressful video game and found that those who had had biofeedback uh, it was a significantly reducing their stress levels in the stressful video game that they were asked to play um, compared to the control group who were showing a higher stress level. So again, we've got there two studies, one study with a group of doctors, one study with a group of soldiers. In both studies, biofeedback is effective in reducing stress levels. So that's showing that actually it's quite an effective technique. Um, a th third strength is that it's a long-term technique. It's not just a quick fix. Like if you think about drugs where you're taking it and then you stop taking it and you basically become just distressed again. If you think about biofeedback, uh, it's going to keep you from it's you, you can keep it's a technique that you've learned that you can keep using and practicing um, and so it's it's not a quick fix you can take it with you for for the rest of your life once you've learned the technique um, if we think about weaknesses though on the other hand it's not been proven that it actually re reduces physiological signs of stress significantly this is interesting in that Le Maire study that I just outlined with the doctors like their stress scores fell they were significantly less stressed but when they measured stuff like how much adrenaline was in their bloodstream and their heart rate it hadn't actually reduced any of those so it, it's quite an interesting finding like why is their stress score reduced if the physiological signs are all still the same so that's a bit of a question mark over it um then another weakness actually is that it needs a lot of effort and motivation the hardest thing really is the transfer phase where you've got to apply it and it's so if if you fail to apply it and fail to make a difference that can be really really demotivating and a lot of people stop using it at that point um, so that's really hard um, equally it can be hard to understand some of the machine readouts that can be hard for some people um, it's also an expensive um, technique because it needs a load of specialist equipment and a one-on-one -on -one therapist potentially portable equipment for you to take back in the transfer phase so it's not a cheap therapy at all so you could think about cost to the nhs economic uh, implications okay